Although this lesson is uh, titled Composition of Functions, which we will get to, I, also, I actually want to start by talking about combinations of functions. And so we're going to look at these algebraically, and then in another video, I will look at how we can graph combinations of functions. So the key idea with combinations of functions is to think about us finding ways to literally combine functions using arithmetic operations such as addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. And if you want, you can take a moment, just pause the video and write these out. But as you can see here, it's really more about notation than anything else, just us making sure that we understand what it means when we see something like f over g of x. And just us understanding that means we're dividing the functions f of x and g of x. An important note that I just want to clarify that when we are finding combinations in fu of functions, that we want to find their overlapping domains. So we want to ensure that their domains are the intersection of the two functions' respective domains. And so I'll, I'll talk about that in a little bit in a later problem. So I've listed some problems here for you to practice, and I'm not going to go through all of them right now. Uh, but let me just try something like number three here. And what we're going to do is we are going to find all the combinations of these two functions here. So let's start with, first off, doing f plus g of x. And all this means is we are going to add these two functions together. So we would say x squared plus 2x, there's our f. And we're going to add to it our g function, which is just 2x plus 1. And we can see here we can just easily simplify that, and that would be x squared plus 4x plus 1. Now, let's go ahead and try f minus g of x. And again, all that means is that we are going to subtract these two functions, being very careful to distribute our negative when we're subtracting all of g of x. So we would say minus 2x minus 1. And so this would come out to negative, uh, x squared minus 1. Okay, I should label this was part b. All right, now for part c, I'm going to do f times g of x. And that is exactly what it sounds like. We're going to multiply these two functions together. So x squared plus 2x times 2x plus 1. And so this is going to come out to be 2x cubed plus x squared plus 4x squared plus 2x. And when we combine all like terms, this comes out to 2x cubed plus 5x squared plus 2x. And we can leave it just as it is. Uh, let's go ahead and also try d, which is to divide these functions. So f over g of x. What would this look like? Well, this would just be our function f, x squared plus 2x, divided by g, 2x plus 1. Okay. So these are just the combination functions here. And you can see that all we're doing is we're just applying our algebraic operations, arithmetic operations, to just add, subtract, divide, and multiply these functions together. Let's try something like number four. And although the directions ask us to find f over g of x and g over f of x, I'm going to focus on just finding f over g of x and finding this function's domain. And you can let you try the rest of the problems on your own time. So given these two functions here, so given root x, if f is root x and g of x is root 4 minus x squared, let's find this combination, this specific combination, and then let's find its domain. Okay? Well. Let's do the combination first. What is f over g of x look like? Well, f over g of x is going to be root x over, what is that? Root 4 minus x squared. Root 4 minus x squared. Let me actually zoom out a little bit so you can see that better. Okay. So there's our combination. Now, as it is right now, it's not simplified because we have the radical in the denominator. So I'm going to multiply both the numerator and the denominator by that denominator so that I can negate that radical. And this can be simplified, and actually let me write it underneath here. This can be simplified as root x times 4 minus x squared, all of that over 4 minus x squared. Okay. All right. Now let's go ahead and let's find the domain. Well, let's look at this carefully here. Our domain, we know there are two different domain restrictions that I need to worry about. First off, let's focus on the numerator. Well, what do we know about this numerator here? Since this is a rational function and the numerator has a radical, we know that x times 4 minus x squared, our radicand here, must be greater than or equal to 0. We're going to start with that. Well, using the zero product property, we can find our critical values. From here, we can say x is equal to 0. And then from here, our critical values, 4 minus x squared is equal to 0, 
Here we would then say x is equal to plus or minus 2. We then draw our number line, write our critical values there, and we're just checking to see for which values is it true that this inequality is a true statement. That is to say, x times 4 minus x squared is indeed greater than or equal to 0. So if you go ahead and just plug in some numbers, so let's say, for example, I try plugging in a value that's less than negative 2, like negative 3. Negative 3 times 4 minus negative 3, that quantity squared, I don't really care what the exact value is. I just really care about the sign. I just want to see whether or not it's positive or negative. Well, on the outside, we have a negative. If I do 4 minus 9, that's negative. Negative times negative, this is going to indeed be positive. So I can say that this is indeed true. Any value that's less than or equal to negative 2 makes that inequality true. So what if I try plugging in the rest of the values, something like negative 1, so negative times positive, that would be negative, so that would not be true. If I try plugging in positive 1, a value between 0 and 2, positive times positive is indeed going to be positive. Oops, had my eraser on. Positive times positive, so this is going to be true. And then what about a value that's greater than 2, like 3? 3 times negative, looks like negative 5, that's going to be negative, so that would not work. Okay. So, so far, so far tentatively, our domain appears to be values from negative infinity to negative 2, and then values from between 0 and 2. But we're not done. We then need to look at our domain for our denominator. And here we see, if we, again, 4 minus x squared is equal to 0, x squared is equal to 4. What we can say from this is that x cannot be equal to plus or minus 2, or that is to say x cannot be equal to positive or negative 2. So how does that change our domain? It means we cannot include negative 2, and then we also can't include positive 2. Okay, so now I've changed my domain to say, okay, all values from negative infinity to negative 2, non-inclusive, and values from 0 to 2. Brackets around 0, but parentheses around 2. Now, I want to circle back to a point I made initially, that the domain of the combinations of two functions must be the overlapping domains of f and g. What that means is that you have to look at the individual domains of f and g as well. And what do we notice about f right from the get-go? We see that f has a domain, let me write this here, f has a domain of only values 0 and greater. That is to say we cannot plug in any negative numbers into root x. So if we can't include negative numbers as part of our domain of f, we cannot include negative numbers as part of our domain of our combination. So that is to say, this pretty much rules out everything from this region here. So our final domain, putting everything together, once we looked, oh, and I could look here, but we already looked at the domain of 4 minus x squared. We saw that that was going to give us um, all this good stuff right over here. So our final domain, once we put everything together, we looked at a combination, we looked at the domain of our individual functions, our domain would be from 0 to 2. That is the domain of this function. Okay? All right, so I'm going to let you try g, of, g over f of x on your own time. And give you an opportunity to practice some of these. I'll kind of bring these back here so you can see them. And then we will talk about compositions of functions as well.